Oh, it's got my name. Bill McGonagall Plainfield. So. Oh, okay. I was going to get to that in just a second. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm Bill McGonigal of Plainfield, and I'm here today to testify in favor of House Bill 1531. I'm sure you'll hear many important points today about how government is instituted to protect us from each other, that just government arises from the consent of the governed, and how the natural right of defense enables a just government to provide for the mutual defense. Our Constitution has specific requirements for just incarceration, namely to reform. These are all good points and true. However, I wish to add a slightly different perspective from perhaps a more pragmatic angle. I'll focus on that point and try to be brief. I would like to bring to the committee's attention the incarceration rate in New Hampshire and illustrate how it compares to some other states and countries around the world. <coughs> and in my written testimony, I've got some charts and graphs. I'll pass it in, pass it around. Uh, According to the standard measure, New Hampshire imprisons 220 individuals per 100,000 residents. The number in isolation doesn't have much meaning, but for comparison, Massachusetts has an incarceration rate of 218 per 100,000. It's pretty similar, yet who would suggest that the level of crime in Massachusetts is similar to that in New Hampshire? Further down this list, so New Hampshire is at the top here. I'm, I'm working down here. So further down the list, we'll find Minnesota at 179, Maine at 151, but not before we pass the narco states of Mexico and Colombia, and Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So to be fair, Saudi Arabia, one might think that the execution rates might keep the incarceration rate down, but Turkey hasn't executed anybody since 1984. Next we'll find Australia at 133, then Canada at 117, but not before passing the repressive regime of China at 122. France marks the halfway point at 109. And we should stop to ask if New Hampshire is a place with twice the criminal activity of France. Below the halfway point, we'll find Italy, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Ireland, Norway. And then Finland incarcerates one third the number of people that New Hampshire does. All these countries have abolished capital punishment. So what's going on here? To be sure, New Hampshire isn't the worst offender among the United States, and the U.S. rate at the federal level is much worse. But there's clearly a problem here. New Hampshire men aren't somehow more evil than their European counterparts, and these European states aren't suffering from rampant crime waves that we're somehow avoiding with our overflowing prisons. As an aside, that's something to consider in light of the county-level controversies about having to build new and larger prisons. But Perhaps the incarceration rates correlate with reduced crime, so the state has a vested interest in such high levels. Again, this can be shown to be untrue by way of comparison. For example, when comparing crime rates between New Hampshire and Switzerland, major crime indicators are very close in scale. I have data in a table in my written testimony that has actual figures. The similarity of the crime rates between New Hampshire and Switzerland is likely more illustrative of a universal aspect of human nature than an effect of a particular legal system. Because other Western countries prosecute victimless crimes less, they don't, and they don't have staggeringly different crime levels than New Hampshire, and the magnitude of the incarceration rate is shown here to not significantly reduce crime, we must consider the effectiveness of our incarceration rates in the prosecution of and imprisonment for victimless crimes. Now, it's possible that the legislature could spend the next 20 years going through the state statutes with a fine-tooth comb to find all these offending statutes, and that's probably a good idea anyway. Whether that kind of long-term project can actually be accomplished in a political environment where control of the legislature tends to flip every four years and the parties tend to abandon the projects of the other guys, I'd like to think it could happen. I'm not really sure. But in the meantime, this legislature has the responsibility to ensure that injustice is not being brought upon the people of New Hampshire. With our existing statutes, over that same 20 year period, it's very likely that the state will imprison hundreds, if not thousands of individuals for committing these so-called crimes that have no victim. And it won't reduce crime rates or protect other people. House Bill 1531 offers a way out of this bind by allowing defendants to offer as a defense that the alleged crime had no victim. Besides saving the taxpayers a tremendous amount of money by not prosecuting and incarcerating all these individuals, un individuals unnecessarily, 
sometimes paying for welfare for the families if uh, they're uh, the main provider. It would start us down the path of bringing New Hampshire in line with more appropriate crime control measures, as established empirically by the example of the entirety of the rest of the Western world. House Bill 1531 doesn't instantly solve all our problems, and I like to think it would be a stopgap measure until our statutes can be straightened out. But it does give the people of New Hampshire a realistic chance at a fair shake of justice in our state. And as I hope I've shown here today, it does so without the risk of increased levels of crime. Thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Do you have any statistics of how many people that are being incarcerated in the state of New Hampshire that are originally from New Hampshire and didn't come across the border because we have we border quite a few states and crime doesn't stop at the border. Would you mean? I don't have those statistics. Um, I have statistics about the the level the levels of crime that are committed in New Hampshire and my assumption would be the people that we imprison in New Hampshire are there for committing crimes in New Hampshire. Hold on. I mean, so what you're telling me is that all of the people that you have there in the statistics came from New Hampshire? If they're in here, they committed a crime in New Hampshire. Okay. So I don't know where... A crime in that's right. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It doesn't necessarily mean that. No. <laughs> it's the, it's how many that. crimes are committed in New Hampshire, which is very similar to crimes that are committed, say, in Switzerland, and and the, and the relative uh, incarceration that's based on those crime rates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.